When you look back through the history of York City Football Club, certain seasons stand out as classics. And one of those is the 1983-84 season, where Dennis Smith York won the 4th Division title with a record 101 points. I went to Harrogate to speak to one of the stars of that team, Derek Hood. So Derek, you joined York City from Hull City in 1980. It turned out to be a, a life-changing decision. D did it feel like that at the time? Uh, I can hear what you're saying there, but no. The choice was the manager at Hull City didn't want me. So it was a case of it was a necessity, you know. I wanted to play football, York City came in for me. And as it turned out, the rest is history. And they've done me a, a big, did me a big favour, you know, getting me to York. And I've thoroughly enjoyed my time there. So when you first joined, what kind of club was it? Um, it, it just seemed, as it is now, a small home in the club where everybody kind of pulls together, gets on with everybody, and hopefully you can get results out of it, you know. But it, uh, it took a long time to happen. They were struggling at the time. And I think we, we finished bottom and applied for relegation once at that particular time. But things have gone on from there. We've gone up and up and then we've gone back down again. You know, and That's a life circle, I think. Because as you mentioned, you didn't have the easiest of starts. And in 80-81, we finished at the very bottom of the Football League. Had to apply for re-election. It was a pretty tough start. Yeah, it certainly was. But, you know, I needed a job effectively. And York City gave me that lifeline. And we started again the following season. That's all you can do. And them days the re-election process still existed. Uh, we haven't got it now, we've now got the pyramid and everybody has got a chance of getting there given the resources and the, the way with to do it. So Dennis Smith and Viv Busby were appointed in May 1982. What do you remember about their arrival and the impact they made when they first came to the club? Well I think as being in the team at, at York that was at the bottom of the league effectively and struggling along for a chap like Dennis to come originally on loan with a view to that kind of situation, you look at somebody who's played in the first division and further further beyond that, you, think, you look at him with a bit of respect. You know, well, yeah, this could work something here, you know. And I got on well with Dennis, as did everybody. And as we know, history did all right. We had a, a, about three or four decent seasons with Dennis and he got the respect of the players, you know, which was, for me, it always is a big thing in football. You give the players the respect they require and you'll get it back from the players on the pack. And that's what happened with us. And it was an immediate impact. 80-33, a bit starting promotion by four points, and you yourself were clubman of the year. That's right, yeah, that particular year. Uh, which is nice, because it's, it's the fans that choose that. You know, and if, I was very grateful for them to, to pick me that particular year, because there was a lot of good players in the side at that time, all playing very well. So the following year is the famous one, the 83-84. Arguably the greatest season in the club's history, some might say. You may remember some of these records that I'll, I'll now read out to you. 31 wins, yep. 13 away wins, 96 goals, 11 league doubles, 20 clean sheets, and the first league team ever to get over 100 points in a season with 101. So, a lot to talk about there. What was the magic ingredient, do you think, that turned the club that finished bottom in 1881 to these fantastic record breakers? I think it was the attitude of, of Dennis and Viv together, who could get a rapport with the boys. And when we went on the park, you just we had the feeling that we were just never going to get beat. You know, as I spoke earlier, that the respect we got from them, we gave them back, and that was our way of doing it effectively, of going out there 100% week in, week out, and the results turning around for us as they did. Everybody gelled. We all got on well together, like a small little family, really, and appreciated each other, worked for each other, and worked very hard. And some fantastic characters in the dressing room as well. Oh, without a doubt. You know, you can go along with them all. Alan Hay, John McPhail. Stevie Seniors, they're all there. You know, everybody different in their own way. Johnny Byrne, Keith Walwyn, you know, fantastic chap. Sadly, we've lost Keith. You know, big shame that was. But that was what it was. The part and parcel of a good squad is having them type of characters all getting on well together. For me, in the career that I've had in football, and thoroughly, thoroughly enjoyed the time that it happened for us. And you're waiting with 36 goals in your city career. Some coming from the penalty spot. Which one of those goals are you most proud of when you look back? I'd have to say all of them. You know, it's, it's the club, it's a goal for the club. You know, it's not just a personal thing for me because you're playing for the club and you want the club to win, no matter what. Now, they weren't brilliant all the time. You know, some were saved and I had to tap them back in again and the other ones I missed. You know, but the, the big thing is you weren't frightened to get up and have another goal. And so if you were to name some of the top games that you, that you enjoyed the most in your City career, what would they be? Oh, they'd be, they'd be obviously the two seasons when we played Liverpool and we got to the fifth round of the cup and replays at Anfield. 
the Arsenal game at home was a good one to remember. Obviously, we, we won that, but I was injured. I didn't play in that game. Keith got the penalty. And I think it was the 89th minute, was it? Something like that. And a frosty pitch. And games like that. But for me, um, getting that fourth division trophy, when we walked up our little Wembley steps at the front of the ground there, just to pick it up on that little parade was brilliant. Superb. Now, suddenly after 334 appearances for the club, your career was cut a little bit short with a persistent knee injury. How difficult was that to take after you know such good service to the club? Well, I don't think I'd, I'd like to put it as good, such good service to football, not, not just to the club, because I was fully intent on playing football till I was 32 or 33 back then. But as you say, I was it was sadly cut short. I did have a lot of trouble with my knee, and subsequently had to finish because of it. Otherwise, I'd have been a cripple, and I wouldn't be probably sat here as looking as I am. I'd be awful, like really, but. Um, it took a lot of adjusting, moving out of football and trying to get a job in the real world, being a normal person effectively, wanting jobs, needing to get a job, got a wife and a family to support, you know, it was pretty difficult, considering the fact that I left school with no qualifications or no, I was one of those that left school, I would be a footballer, nobody will touch me kind of thing, you know, and if I could offer advice to any youngster nowadays, don't go along thinking like I thought, you do need an education as well. And so in November 88, you had your testimonial. It seems strange to talk about testimonials because these days they, they very rarely seem to happen. Do you think that's something to do with perhaps a lack of loyalty in football these days? I would, I would definitely say that. Yeah, People nowadays, um, and I'm probably a little bit cynical with this actually, is that they play from a pocket rather than do from a heart and compassion and they need to do it for the club, etc. They're doing it for themselves. There is the few that do stay around a long while. And I was very grateful for the club at the time because I didn't actually make 10 years at York because of the knee, but they, they nicely granted me a testimonial of the game that I had. And I just tried to make it fun for the fans who turned out week in, week out, away and at home. I didn't want to have a big name club or anything that way, you have to charge higher prices and things like that at all. Like I just got a nice two and a half, three thousand people in, I think, and all that. And I hope everybody enjoyed themselves. I know I certainly did. And we, we did afterwards as well. And finally, Derek, thinking about the team the way it is now, obviously moving forward into the present, do you get to go and watch City much these days? And what do you think of the current side? I don't get a lot. So I've been two or three times. Um, my life has a different direction with, with the work I do now. I have triplet grandchildren as well who take a lot of our time and thoughts up and my wife and stuff at home, what we do. But I do get across and obviously I watch the results week in, week out. And I'm pleased to see that Billy's turned it around nicely. He's gained himself a lot of players who respect him obviously and they're working for him on the park, the results are starting to work for him as well. We're in the upper reaches of the league now which is nice to see and hopefully we can continue in that vein and as you stated earlier, out of the playoff final and away we go. Well let's hope so, it won't be 101 points but let's hope so. Thank you very much for your time Derry. You're welcome, thank you.